Vivian Meyer was not only a really good photographer, but she was a master of self-motivation, and she had an unrelenting dedication to her work. Many photographers shoot off a few frames and sit back waiting for the applause, but when she had an idea, she just kept on going. Over a lifetime, she took 585 different self-portraits, and in total, she shot 143,000 frames. In Chicago, she adapted her photography practice to accommodate her job as a nanny. She would take the three young boys that she had in her care on long walks and outings that provided the space and the locations for her photographs. She was a loner and an introvert, never married or had children, and didn't have any real close friends. This probably made her feel somewhat isolated, but she refused to become a victim and developed her photographic practice as a source of meaning and as a way of connecting with the world. All photographers' lives and experiences are different. There is no ideal. If you find yourself in the suburbs, then shoot what it feels like to live there, like Robert Adams. If you have a 95, then shoot at night like Todd Hyder. If you have three energetic children to look after, then be like Sally Mann or Vivian Meyer. Vivian Meyer was born in New York to immigrant parents. She spent time in France and returned again to New York in 1951. Because very little was initially known about Meyer, a number of myths have evolved. One of these was that she was never really interested in having a work seen by others. Recently, however, it's emerged that while in New York, she actively pursued a career within the commercial photography world. Her main interest was finding an outlet for picture postcard type photographs. She didn't have any success and when she turned 30, she moved to Chicago to become a nanny. Possibly due to her traumatic childhood, she developed a hoarding disorder. It seems that people with this ailment are particularly prone to collecting and hoarding both newspapers and pictures. She had a huge collection of newspapers in her living quarters and increasingly guarded her photographs from the outside world. She might have been on the autistic spectrum, but she wasn't cut off from the world. She could be open and friendly, and she had an interest in current affairs and was particularly aware of social injustices. People that knew her said that she was really bright, and from her photographs, you can see that she had a real sense of irony and humor.
Photography is a very insular activity in many ways. You are either out on your own, or even when you are taking photographs with other people, the creative conversations are almost always happening inside your head. It's easy to fall into a trap of feeling that what you're doing isn't good enough or that there's a futility about getting your work out into the world. It's true there aren't as many outlets for work these days, but if you took up photography to become rich and famous, then you are more than likely in for some hard knocks. You have to find the space inside yourself in which you feel comfortable with your own photographic practice. This can usually be found in the understanding that the act of creating in itself is nourishing. Other non-trivial benefits are things like discovering a purpose and seeing the camera as a passport for interacting with the world. Maya was obsessed with recording the world around her but didn't necessarily need to see the results. Her relationship with her surroundings and the people within it was through a camera it seemed that for her, once the photographs were taken, she wasn't all that interested in the outcome. She left behind thousands of undeveloped rolls of film. The making of it seems to have been fulfillment enough and no doubt brought its own solitary kind of freedom. Motivation comes in a myriad of forms. A few days ago, I reread a portion of J.D. Selenga's Raise High the Roof Beam Carpenters. I'll read this passage. I have scars on my hands from touching certain people. Once in the park when Franny was still in the carriage, I put my hand on the downy pate of her head and left it there too long. Another time, at Lou's 72nd Street, with Zoe during a spooky movie. He was about six or seven, and he went under the seat to avoid watching a scary scene. I put my hand on his head. Certain heads, certain colors and textures of human hair leave permanent marks on me. Other things too, Charlotte once ran away from me outside the studio, and I grabbed her dress to stop her, to keep her near me. A yellow cotton dress I loved because it was too long for her. I still have a lemon yellow mark on the palm of my right hand. Oh God, if I'm anything by a clinical name, I'm a paranoic in reverse. I suspect people are plotting to make me happy. This paragraph by Selinga makes me weak at the knees, not in the same way as Rachel McAdams, 
but in a way that inspires me to craft a more subtle level of communication in my photographs. For much of Maya's adult life, she was rarely without her Rolleiflex camera, and she took an astonishing number of pictures during her lifetime. Maya died in 2009, aged 83, while her life's work lay unattended in a storage locker. Luckily, John Maloof and Jeffrey Goldstein bought her images and have made them public. Her work could have been lost forever, but a number of factors have contributed to her retrospective rise to fame. The media has latched onto the almost mythical story of an unknown artist creating in isolation, then falling on bad times and dying alone. Also, the unexpected tale of two guys bidding blind on the archive at an auction and later discovering the quality of her work. She also happened to have been a really talented photographer. But the most powerful aspect of this whole story is the depth of her commitment to photography and the desire to get out and photograph over and over again. A few decent images wouldn't have made her a household name but over time and through perseverance, she managed to leave behind a broad personal vision of the world in which she lived. I hope you enjoyed this video as well as the collection of Vivian Meyer photographs. Please like, subscribe and comment if you wish. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well. And find out what the future holds in store.